Yuha. Allez. Allez. La taqoum al-sa'a hatta yuqatil al-muslimun al-yahud fa yaqtulahum al-muslimun fa yaqtabi al-yahud wara al-hajar wa خلفي تعالى فاقتل إلا الغرقد فإنه من شجر اليهود And you have no idea how much I hope Allah is going to curse you to the rest of your life You are Ali Ali الزنا لا يحرم لو واحد زنى بامرأة وحملت منه يقول لك إن هذا الماء غير محرم يعني إيه غير محرم يعني دي مش بنته يعني ايه برضه مش فاهم يا عم الشيخ؟ يعني هل يجوز له نكاحها؟ قال لك اي اتجوزها عادي. دي بنته، قال لك مين اللي قال بنته؟ هي لا بنته لا شرعا ولا شيء. ما مش بنته، لن تنسب له اصلا. ولما واحد يزني بواحده ويخلف منها بنت، تتكتب باسمه باسم الزاني؟ لا ابدا. ابدا. يبقى مش بنته. Hello guys, God bless you. Nice to have you with us. I mean تكتب uh, you just جرم uh, you heard the sheikh speaking, right, guys? You heard the sheikh speaking. There, it's okay to uh, have sex with your own daughter. I mean, she's not your daughter. She's not your daughter, man. Go and start to f her immediately. I mean, uh, she's uh, uh, out of uh, legal marriage, and uh, I really uh, hope that you took out your umbrellas, guys, when uh, the spitting cobra uh, in the shape of Mimi Hijab was uh, making your screens wet so I hope you have a good umbrella every time we play the introduction video nice to have you here guys uh, <clears throat> Phil Herrera, God bless you Buya Kantor, Budi Dharma, World Changer Peach Girl 91 Hafza, Idasi Ads, Frauch Everybody who just joined Princess Rainbow, someone who is called Rob's daddy, okay. Filter shift, Ian Randall, free its mode of. Welcome everybody, Freddy, Mimi Hijab, Ansel, Unicorn Iron, The Guardian, TM Crosspill, Sammy. Welcome everybody, God bless you, God bless your families, including the Muslims who always hate us, curse us, at least 70 times a day when they repeat the curses of Allah on us, in the Fatiha. So, hope everybody is doing okay. Today's topic, guys, is why Muslims don't celebrate Christmas. Why Muslims don't celebrate Christmas? Why should you not celebrate Christmas? I mean... Muslims, that's one of the most beautiful celebration. Especially this month is a really holy month because the good news, the gospel, the good news, the truth came into the world. And since, guys, it's the truth that came into the world in the form of Jesus Christ as the eternal word of God in the flesh. So it's the truth against evil and falsehood. I want to say the following. Tonight, we are going to witness the most anticipated match in the history of professional wrestling for the heavyweight championship of the world. Are you ready? Wrestling fans, are you ready? For the thousands in attendance and the millions watching around the world, from the capital city of the United States of America, Washington, D.C., ladies and gentlemen, uh, let's get ready to rumble! So, are you ready? <laughs> are you ready? Today is going to be truth against falsehood, i.e. Islam. The man-made 
sex cult of Muhammad created for him and him alone by him and for him alone to preach against Jesus Christ the truth our Lord and Savior the coming of the truth in this world now why did I guys pick this topic today why because in let's say in the last five years in the last five years we see Imams because they know they are bankrupt the Imams and the Shiuch and the Stas they know Islam is dying they know Islam is bankrupt it's dying everywhere especially in the Middle East many Muslims are leaving Islam churches new communities are being built Muslims are leaving Islam by the thousands and thousands we have even a complete Sunni community who left Islam became Christians and they built a church in Kobani they left Afrin Sunni Kurdish Muslims they left Afrin and they went to Kobani to build a community a Christian community so Islam is really dying and you know to prevent that the Imams need to do all kind of gymnastics all kind of tactics to you know try their best to keep Muslims in this man-made cult so they are trying to tell the Muslims in the, especially in the last five years it didn't happen before so they are trying their Muslims their victims actually because Islam is a big business for the Shiuch and Imams so they are trying to tell them, don't celebrate Christmas, say no to Christmas, ban Christmas, Abduls, Muhammadans, ban it. But you know, if you go to the Middle East, guys, if you go to the Middle East, as you see, Christmas is celebrated sometimes even more than here in the West, more than here in the UK, more than here sometimes even in a couple of uh, towns in America. So you see, they even go on the streets to give uh, all kind of uh, presents to the children. You see here, this is a Muslim lady. This is Islam. You see the tower. You see the the towers of the mosque. Well, they are celebrating on the streets, man. You see that the mosque is here. <laughs> Santa, Santa, I want candy. Says the Muslim boy. I want candy. You see, so they celebrate Christmas, guys. I kid you not. I'm from the Middle East. I know. They celebrate Christmas more than here in the West. The Muslims, not the Christians. The Muslims. But here in the West, you know, because Islam is dying, they have to, you know, they have to. The Imams have to keep those poor victims in the dark. They know. They know, guys. They know. They know, right? They know. So since it's the celebration, guys, this holy month, the celebration of our Lord and Savior coming as the truth in, in, in this world. And we need the truth and only the truth can set us all free. We celebrate in this holy month the birth of our Lord and Savior as the eternal word of God in the flesh. So I invite you Muslims who are actually sincere looking for the truth, I invite you to become a Christian. It's not late. It's not too late to leave that man-made sex cult created by Muhammad 1400 years ago. Leave it. Drop Muhammad. And come back home to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So I think this is a good topic, guys. And why actually Muslim Imams, why are Muslim Imams trying their best to keep Muslims here in the West in the dark and tell them don't celebrate Christmas here don't do it because as I told you Islam is a big business and they want to keep the Muhammadans the Muslim Muhammadans to be worshippers of Muhammad and Muhammad alone you know Islam is a cult created by Muhammad so that Muslims can worship him and the proof is in front of you this is chapter 48 guys chapter 48 ayah 9 it says, لِتُؤْمِنُوا بِاللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ وَتُعَذِّرُوهُ وَتُوَقِّرُوهُ وَتُسَبِّحُوهُ بُكْرَةً وَاصِيلًا That means you have to assist Muhammad in battle, you have to honor and respect him, and you have to do tasbih, which is glorification 
for the Rasul, for Muhammad, every morning and evening. Why am I trying to teach you that? Because when I went to school and I learned the basic grammar rules, the basic Arabic grammar rules, they taught me that the last mentioned person in an ayah or in a sentence like this, all the words that come after count for the last person and the last person alone. So in this case, you have to glorify Muhammad every morning and evening because he is the last person mentioned in this ayah. So this is why, guys, this is why the Imams in the West are trying to keep the poor victims that we call Muslims who do not know Arabic, who don't speak Arabic, because 90, more than 90% of the Muslim world today, in 2019, they don't know Arabic. They can't read the Quran in Arabic and understand the Quran in Arabic. They are dependent on the false translations. So they have no clue. So they try to tell them, don't do it. You know, stay a Muhammadan. Keep worshipping Muhammad. Muhammad is the, key, the main key. Worship him. Don't worship Jesus. Don't come to the truth. Right, Muslims? And the proof is in front of you. So this is why we... Christians call you Muhammadans because you are worshippers of the Rasul of Muhammad and the ayah is my witness you have to worship Muhammad glorify him every morning and evening so do you want to stay a worshipper of a man or do you want to come back to your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ big chance that you were a Christian your family were Christians especially in the Middle East, right? Before Muhammad came uh, with his, uh, uh, especially the Sahaba after his death to conquer Egypt, Syria, Turkey, Iraq, all of those countries were Christian countries. But you know, the Muslim Imams, they rather, as we mentioned, they want Muslim Muhammadans to keep worshipping this desert guy, this illiterate desert guy, 1400 years ago. They love to worship him, right? And someone uh, made this, it's actually funny. So they, they, you see these Muslims in uh, Burka, they are jealous of Aisha, you know? Once you're over 12 years, they lose all interest. You know, rich and famous men are always show, showing off with some young chick. <laughs> right, Muslims? So you rather worship a desert man, an illiterate desert guy who was nothing but a sexual predator, a child abuser, a pedophile. You rather worship him than our sinless Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ who never committed such horrendous crimes. And you call this a man of God? Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. So the Muslims who are sincere, please leave Islam. Please leave the worship of this mad, madman, this sexual brother of Muhammad. And please come back home to Jesus. Muslims who don't care about themselves, who are not sincere, please stay in the dark, Keep worshipping Muhammad as stated in chapter 48, ayah 9. Ya Muhammadan. Now if we go to the Bible, guys. If we go to the Bible and we go to Luke 22, chapter 2, verse 11, it says, For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is the Christ the Lord. Do you see some Muslims say, you know, can you show us where Jesus is God? Well, here. The proof is in front of you. So, Jesus, who is the eternal word, as stated in John 1.1, 1, 1, who was with God and is God, the word is God, that became flesh and dwelt among us, is the same word that, is, that took on flesh and was born in the city of David, as our Savior, the Savior of all mankind, including you Muslims, and He is the Christ, the Lord. Christ and Lord. Now Muslims always challenge us. Show us where Jesus is saying, I am God. Show us where Jesus himself is saying, I am God. Well, no problem. Let us, let us begin with the Gospel of Matthew, guys. Let us begin with the Gospel of Matthew. If we go to the Aramaic, 
All right? The same language that Jesus spoke. Jesus said the following, but Joshua, Jesus, immediately spoke with them and, and he said, so Jesus is saying here, Jesus is the one speaking, take heart, I am the living God. Was that a challenge Muslims? Do not be afraid, I am the living God. Do you see it? Jesus in his Aramaic language said, I am the living God. And this is in Matthew, you can find it in Matthew 27, 14, 27. If we go to the Gospel of Mark, so that was Matthew. If we go to a second Gospel, the Gospel of Mark, for they all saw him and they were afraid. And immediately he, Jesus, he spoke with them. And he said, who? Jesus said to them, take heart. I am the living God. Do not afraid. Mark 6, verse 50. Do you see it, guys? Are you with me, guys? Forget about the, the Abdul who wants to change the topic in the chat, guys. Stay focused. Use this. This is the Aramaic. The same language that Jesus spoke. The same language that Jesus gave you the Lord's Prayer. Our Father that art in heaven. In the same language. This is directly translated from Aramaic. You Muslims... Challenge us. Show us where Jesus is saying, I'm God. Well, here, it's in, it's in front of you. The living God. I am the living God. In his own language. The Aramaic. And I am an Aramaic speaker. I confirm. And if we go to another verse from Mark, from the Gospel of Mark. But Joshua said to him, Jesus said to him, I am the living God, and you shall behold the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of power and coming on the clouds of heaven. When we ask Muslims, who is, who is the one who is uh, in the clouds of heaven? They say, it's Allah. Well, here is the same quotation by, by uh, Jesus Christ. He is the living God, and he sits at the right hand of power, coming on the clouds of heaven. Do you see it? Who is riding the clouds in, in Islam? It's Allah. And from now the Luke's gospel, the gospel of Luke. But all of them were saying, You are therefore the Son of God? Jesus said to them, You are saying that I am the living God. Luke 20, 20, 22 verse 70. And finally, from the Gospel of John the Beloved. From the Gospel of John. Joshua said to her. Jesus said to her. I am the living God. I who I am speaking with you. John 4 verse 26. Do you see it guys? Was that a challenge? You always challenge us. Show us what you're saying. I'm God. Well here the proof is in front of you Abdul. Ya Muhammad and you worshipper of Muhammad. The proof is in front of you. Are you going to leave Islam now? Because you always show us. And, and I have been de uh, debated many times, guys, by Muslims. If you can show me where Jesus says, I'm God, I'm going to leave Islam. Well, here is the challenge provided. Here is the proof provided. So are you going to leave Islam now, Muslims? Muhammad, his lies are now crushed because Jesus is saying, I'm God. Guys, please use this. Use this. Help me to help you. And again... From another verse from John. But Joshua said to them, I am the living God. Do not be afraid. John 6 verse 20. Do you see it guys? So how many, how many more verses do we need to give you Muslim to show you why we are celebrating the coming of Jesus in this world. In this holy month of December. Because we are celebrating of the coming of the living God, Jesus himself, as he uh, stated in the verses that we showed you on the screen. Read in context. Well, I'm reading in context. <laughs> read in context. I'm reading in context. Jesus is the one saying, I am the living God. Are you going to leave Islam uh, now, Muslims? Because you always challenge us. Zakir Naik, show us. Zakir Naik, and I quote, Brother! Zechariah saying, brother, show us where Jesus says, I'm God, worship me. Right here. Brother, this is in Aramaic. 
in the language of Jesus himself. Brother, yes, brother, Jesus said it, brother. Are you going to leave Islam now, Mr. Zecher Nike? Oh, doctor of medicine, doctor of medicine. Yes, brother, I'm going to leave Islam, brother. Yes, brother. Certainly, brother, because now you just provided the evidence where Jesus says, I'm God. Do we have any Abdul who still wants to claim? Show us where Jesus says, I'm God, worship me. Well, the proof is in front of you, Abdul. Mr. Free, yeah, donkey ibn donkey. Yeah, jahsh ibn jahsh. Are you not the one who always says, show us where Jesus says, I'm God, worship me. Well, here the proof is in front of you. Yeah, jahsh ibn jahsh. Why are you a worshiper of Muhammad? Yeah, jahsh ibn jahsh. Why are you such a Muhammadan? Why are you rejecting the truth? Ya Wisikh ibn Wisikh. Ya Najis ibn Najis. You are the Najis one because you are the filthy one who is following Satan and his man-made prophet. His self-proclaimed prophet Muhammad. You are a Muhammadan filthy Najis. You are a worshipper of Satan in the shape of Allah in disguise. And you are a rejecter of the truth. And you are the rejecter of the living God. And you are a kisser of black stones. You love to kiss black stones idols. But you don't want to worship the real living God. You're a fool. And you've been fooled for the last 1400 years by the dead and rotting Muhammad. Who is now rotting in his grave somewhere in Medina. People who just joined, God bless you. Thank you for having, thank you for being here. Thank you for your support. Today, as we mentioned for the people who just joined, today is the celebration of the holy month of the coming of the eternal word of God into the world. And we showed you from the beginning that actually Muslims in the Middle East celebrate Christmas like we do. But here in the West, the Imams are so bankrupt. They are so afraid that Islam will die in the West. They are saying, to the Muslims here in the West. Please don't celebrate Christmas. Say no to Christmas. Ban Christmas. And they want to keep the Muslims in the dark. And they love to keep the Muslims, the victims of Islam, to keep them as Muhammadans, worshipping Muhammad, as stated in chapter 48, ayah 9. You have to glorify Muhammad as a Muhammadan because the Quran says so. Glorify him every morning and evening. Right? And as we mentioned in the grammar Arabic rules, the last mentioned person, person in, the, in a sentence like this, in an eye like this, the last person, all the words come, that come after are for the last person and only for the last person alone. So do you have to do tasbih, glorification, act of worship every morning and evening for Muhammad. So this is why, this is why the Imams here in the West, in the last five years, let's say, are trying their best because they are bankrupt. They are trying, doing all kinds of gymnastics to keep the Muslims as Muhammadans. So here in the Middle East, guys, in the Middle East, they are actually worshipping Christmas. As you see. I want to get Santa, I want a candy. And you know, the mother, you see the mother. Yeah, so take the candy, man, from the Christian... Uh, I want a candy. Yes, mom. Mom! Mom! I want a candy from Santa, mom! It's okay, uh, Muslim boy. It's okay. Take the candy from the Christian Santa. Alright, Muslims? So, guys, it seems that we have at least 12 dislikes. We have 12 dislikes. So, let me open my Skype. Hopefully, we'll have a Muslim Hopefully we have a Muslim sheikh or imam or maybe a Muslim who thinks he has the no courage and the knowledge to call us. My Skype is open. Look. My Skype is open. Call me. My Skype ID is the Rob Christian. The Rob Christian as provided by the admins in the live chat. The Rob Christian without separation. If you have any courage in you, if you call yourself a man, ya Farid, ya Amin, ya... Uh, Mimi uh, Hijab, Ali Dawa, you Muslim heroes, you so-called Muslim apologists, call us. Show us where Jesus says, 
I'm God, worship me. Well, here you go. From four, all four Gospels we showed you that from the Gospel of Matthew, Jesus is claiming that he is the living God. From the Gospel of Mark, I am the living God, says Jesus. Again from Mark, I am the living God, says Jesus. You see it? And we showed you from all the Gospels. In the Aramaic, in the language of Jesus himself, he spoke Aramaic. He says, I am the living God. Luke, and from John, the last mentioned Gospel, here in, on this website, in John, Jesus is saying to a woman, I am the living God. I am. I who, who I am speaking with you. And from another verse from John, it says, but Joshua said to them, I am the living God. Do not be afraid. How many more verses do you need, Muslims? Show me. Mimi Hijab, quote unquote. Mimi Hijab saying, quote unquote. Show me. Silence me. Well, here you go. Abdul, son of Abdul. Now, guys, if we go to chapter 9, since the Muslims are too scared to call us, we have at least 12 dislikes. So we have at least 12 Muslims watching. Since they are too scared, let us continue the teaching, guys. Hopefully, one of them is going to man up and call us on Skype. I mean, come on, Abdul. Skype, you can download Skype in one minute. And you can install it in maybe 30 seconds. And you can call me uh, in a couple of seconds. So don't be scared, man. Ask Santa for a mic. This is the holy month. Ask Santa to put you on the good list, not on the naughty list. Ask him, be a good boy. Ask him to provide for you a microphone filing in 2019, 2020. Maybe then you can call us, right? I don't have a mic. Yeah, right. So we go to chapter 9, guys. We can prove to you from the Quran that Al Masih, the Messiah, is equal with Allah. Let me show you. It says in chapter 9, ayah 31, talking about the Christians. Guys, this is talking about the Christians. They, the Christians, have taken their rabbis and their monks as lords. That's a lie. We Christians don't take our monks and rabbis as lords. Here, Allah. And Muhammad are liars. Allah and Muhammad, the bankrupt prophet, the fake prophet, is lying about the Christians because Christians don't worship their rabbis and monks. So Muhammad is nothing but a liar. Face it, Muslims. Swallow it. Don't forget to digest it. Else you have to go to see a doctor or maybe visit a, a hospital. Deal with the fact that Muhammad here is lying about the Christians. On top of that, it says they, the Christians, have taken their rabbis and monks as lords instead of Allah. There's nothing called God. It says Allah wa and the Messiah. So here, who are the real lords? Who are the real lords here in the ayah? It's Allah and the Messiah. Now Muslims will do all kind of gymnastics, guys. Muslims will do all kind of gymnastics to explain to you. But wait a second. Wait a second, here, you know, here's a Dhamma, uh, Fatha, Kasra, you know, the vowels are changing the meaning. Abdul, I challenge you, Ya Abdul, son of Abdul, Ya Mushrik, son of Mushrik, you worshiper of Muhammad, I challenge you to provide for me one complete 7th century Uthmanic manuscript that agrees with your gymnastics. Can you show me one? complete Uthmanic manuscript from the 7th century that has vowels, that has dots, to back up what you're saying. So clearly, it says, instead of Allah and the Messiah. Who are the lords in Islam? Allah and the Messiah. And as we showed you from the previous ayah in 48.9, that Muhammad is also to be worshipped, to be glorified, tasbih. Right, Muslims? So who are lords in Islam? Lords in Islam, Muhammad plus Al Masih, the Messiah, plus Allah, the Moon Idol. Did you catch it, guys? Did you catch it? We just proved it to you. Right, Muslims? So, this is why you should actually 
celebrate Christmas because you have to worship al Masih besides Allah as lords. Right, Muslims? <laughs> this is too much fun. This is too much fun. So why are you not celebrating Christmas, Muslims? We, according to this ayah, Allah and the Messiah are equal. Then the proof is in front of you. Al Allah wal Messiah. Allah the Moon Idol and the Messiah are lords, right? And as we explained, they are lying here about the Christians. They say here in this ayah that the Christians have taken their monks and rabbis, which is a complete lie fabricated by Muhammad, the filthy liar. Now, if we go to chapter 5, if we go to chapter 5, do we have any Muslim before we continue? Do we have any Muslim who thinks, who has the courage and the knowledge to call up Christian and refute me? Refute me! Silence me! Come on, man! Uh, they are trying to hack my IP. Well, good luck. I have a VPN, Abdul. Abdul's good luck. I have one of the best VPNs. So they can try. Good luck with that. So <clears throat> chapter 5, I 116 from Surah Al-Ma'idah. Surah Al-Ma'idah, I 116, it says, and when Allah, there's nothing called God, this is a false translation. When Allah, right? When Allah said, O oh Jesus, son of Mary, this do say unto men, did you say to the people, take me and my mother as gods apart from Allah? There's nothing called God, guys. Forget about God. You have to picture Allah in this translation. So here Allah is saying, or Allah is asking Isa, there's nothing called Jesus. What a filthy liar this guy is, man. Let me change. I hopefully we will get a better translation. Let's see. Here again lying. There's nothing called Jesus, man. It's Isa. Is there, a, is there actually a normal translation? Look, again lying. Let's see how many liars we have in the translations, guys. You see these filthy deceivers, guys? Do you see these filthy deceivers? Let's see. Ah, uh, finally. Who is this guy? This guy is a little bit more honest. They are all liars, but this, this guy is more honest. And when Allah will say, O Isa, see, there is nothing called Jesus. This is the fake Islamic version of Jesus. When Isa, did you say, O Isa, did you say to, to your men or to your followers, take me and my mother for two gods besides Allah? <laughs> he will say, glory be to thee. It did not befit me that I should say what I had no right to say. If I had said it, thou wilt indeed have known it. Thou knows what is in my mind. I know, and continue all the way to the last word in this. So here, actually, actually guys, Jesus is not denying the, the Trinity. He actually says here, this is a false Trinity because... Because maybe some false Christians, I don't know, I don't know, maybe they are the ones who added uh, Mary into this. Mary is not God in Christianity. So this is a false trinity and Allah is not all-knowing. Allah is not all-knowing. This is why he needs to ask Isa. I mean, Allah, Allah. Oh Allah, why are you... Asking Isa, I mean, you're, you claim to be God in the Quran. Why are you asking Isa for the Trinity? And Jesus here, guys, is not denying the actual Trinity, or let's say Isa. Isa is not denying actually the real Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. He actually only denies that his mother is part of the Trinity. So actually, this is, this is not against the Trinity, guys. I kid you not, right? Because Mary is not part of the Trinity, right? 
So actually this ayah is helping us guys and showing that Allah is not all-knowing. I mean Allah, why don't you know Allah, why don't you know that the Christians worship the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit? You see it guys, are you still with me? Do you understand what I'm tr trying to teach you here? Do you understand what I'm trying to, if you don't, just say no. Give me a two if you don't. Did you catch it? So Jesus, or in this case Isa, as they called him, is not denying the Trinity. He's only denying that his mother is part of the Trinity. Right? He is denying that Mary is part of the Trinity. So this is not against us. <laughs> Actually, it's even more worse. If we go continue to the next verse, guys. If we continue to the next ayah, it's even more worse. Why? Because this is talking about the death of Jesus. Yes, the death of Jesus here is confirmed. Because it's talking about the following. Jesus is... This is about Jesus, still about Jesus or Isa. But when though this caused me to die. What? So a fate any caused me to die. So this guy, this translator, I actually love him, Shaker, <laughs> he's actually showing you that Jesus died. So the death and crucifixion Jesus is here in this ayah confirmed. Do you see it? Caused me to die. To a fate any. Finally, we find a really close translation for that. Guys, if we go to Google Translate, Google Translate, you know, to back up what we say, Tawaf Feiteni comes from the word Tawaffa, to die or die. You passed away. Do you see it? This is the same word. Copy, paste. This word, copy, paste, translate, you passed away. Do you see it? So actually, here, the death and resurrection of Jesus is confirmed. BAM Muslims in your face! Do we have any Muslim who denies the death of Jesus in his Quran? Do we have any Muslim, Shaykh, Ya Ustaz, Ya Imam, Ya, 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 ya Mufti? Do you dare to call me? Where are the Muslim heroes? I challenge you to call me. My Skype is open. Call me. My Skype ID is the Rob Christian. I challenge you to call me and refute me. I challenge you to silence me. Bam! In your face. In your face, Muslims, in this holy month. Deal with it. The death of Jesus is confirmed in the Quran. Cause me to die. Deal with it, Muslims. Deal with it. Eat it, swallow it, but don't forget to digest it. Ya Farid, ya, ya Farid. There's a guy who calls himself Farid. He always loves to attack a Christian prince and attacks me, right? Where are you, Ya Farid? Ya, 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 ya potato. Where are you, Ya potato? Why are you Amin? Why are you Ya Ibn Jurran? You minions of Mimi Hijab, where are you? Call me, refute me. Yalla Ya Hadith expert. Yeah, they call him the Hadith expert. They call this guy the Hadith expert. Can you imagine? Call me Mr. Expert. Why are you, why are you such a coward? Why are you such a Jaban, ya Jaban ibn Jaban? Why don't you dare to call me life and try to refute me about today's topic? I challenge you to call me and refute me. But, you know, they are cowards. The only thing they can do is make response videos like cowards that they are, like the potatoes they are. Oh, potato, potato, potato. Potato, potato, potato. The potato song is for you.
Potato, potato, potato. Ya Jaban Ibn Jaban. Coward, son of a coward. That's what you Muslims are. Especially the hero. I'm talking about the heroes, you know, that are actually almost worshipped like Muhammad in the Quran. They worship, they almost worship their heroes who are nothing but coward terrorists, text terrorists, who can only make response videos and sit in the chat. You have to glorify Muhammad, ya Muhammad, and you dare to call us mushrikeen. According to this ayah, chapter 48, ayah 9, you have to glorify the Rasul every morning and evening because the last mentioned person is the Rasul. And according to Arabic grammar rules, if you went to school, you claim to be an Arab, you went to school, according to the Arabic grammar rules, the last mentioned per person, in this case the Rasul, the messenger, all the words that come after are for the last person. So you have to do tasbih, act of worship, glorification, every morning and evening for Muhammad and Muhammad alone. Right, Muslims? And as we explained to you in chapter 5, ayah 117, the death of Jesus is confirmed in the Quran. Tawafaytani, cause me to die, Jesus is saying. So here Jesus himself, who they call Isa, just confirmed his death. And resurrection, of course, because he was raised up, as the Muslims claim. He was raised up to heaven. So the death and resurrection is confirmed in this ayah. Do we have any Abdul? Yeah, Abdul, call me Abdul, call me. Brother, yes, brother, call me brother. We are alive, brother. Brother, yes, brother, call me brother. See, you see these cowards, man. You see the cowards. Keep silent. Stay silent, fi sabil Muhammad, your Lord. Ya Muhammadans. This is why we call you Muhammad. You are worshippers of Muhammad. This is why you don't want to become Christians, right? Because you love to worship Muhammad, who is now dead. <laughs> you know, they always uh, mock G uh, our Jesus, right, guys? They say, your God died. But wait a second, Abdul. We just showed you from chapter 48, ayah 9, that your God is the Rasul. But your, your God, Muhammad, the Rasul, died. And he's rotting somewhere in Medina. He's dead. And you try to mock our Jesus. <laughs> he's rotting, he's rotten and dead. Your God, Muslims, Muhammad, is Dead and he's rotting. He rotted and he's dead. Deal with it. Yeah, because these people are Muhammadans. They are followers of a cult leader, Muhammad. They are worshippers of the, their cult leader, Muhammad. This is, they don't, this is why they are rejecting the truth. They, this is why they are rejecting Al-Haq. Who is Al-Haq? Yeshua, Jesus, Joshua. He is Al-Haq. He is the truth. He is the life bringer. Right? If we go to chapter 19, guys. If we go to chapter 19. Guys, are you with me? Did I put you asleep or are you enjoying this spanking today? Are you still with me? Give me one. Drink something so we can continue. Drink something, guys. Uh, Make yourself a nice tea. I know this is a long teaching, but you know, we are celebrating the truth and we are exposing Islam. We are spanking the falsehood of Islam, the false teaching of Muhammad in the Quran. This is Quran. Qahwa. Who wants a qahwa? Who wants a coffee? Make for yourself a nice qahwa, coffee. So we can continue. And uh, by the way, sharing is caring. I won't have a nice cup of coffee too, guys. If you don't mind. Sharing is caring, guys. Maybe a, a cookie or some milk. It's all good, man. This is Chris Christmas, man. Sharing is caring in this holy month. <laughs> How do you know I'm having tea? I'm more, I'm more all-knowing than Allah himself. 
that's why anyway so this ayah guys chapter 19 ayah 15 if you scroll back to understand in context who it's talking about it's talking about john the baptist who, call, who they call yahya there's nothing called john in islam it's yahya yeah yahya oh john they claim that it's john this is a false translation but what else is new guys what else is new let me switch up maybe we can what about shakir again shakir was close last time he confirmed the death of jesus in chapter 5 ayah 117 cause me to die right so let's see yeah see you see guys you see it you see how they lie in their translation there's nothing called john in islam man there's nothing called jesus in islam so john is called yahya <laughs> Who is Yahya? I don't know. Maybe you know. I, I never heard of Yahya before. I heard of Yohanna. Arabic speaking Christians like myself. We call him Yohanna. John. There's nothing called Yahya, man. Who is Yahya? Anyway. Let it go, man. Christians, let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Yeah, I know. I have a very beautiful voice when I sing. Make sure to not... Have your mirrors very close to, to the speakers. Maybe they will break because of my beautiful voice, man. <laughs> so Yahya, this is talking about Yahya. So chapter 19, ayah 15 is talking about Yahya. And it says, and peace on him, on who? Yahya, who they claim that is John the Baptist. Peace be on Yahya, on the day he was born, and on the day he dies, and on the day he is raised to life right you see it so this is talking about john when he was born guys peace be on the day he was born the day he dies and the day he is raised to life do you see it did you did you catch what's happening here guys did you caught how this is talking about john or in this case yeah yeah there's nothing called john did you did you catch what i'm trying to say here did you did you see so here his death his bo being born, his death, and being raised is confirmed. Right, guys? Give me one. Are you with me? Are you with me here? Peter is with me. The right way is with me. TM Crosspills is with me. Kim is with me. Okay, God bless you guys. Please stay focused. I know the chat is really uh, nice, you know. But focus with me here because now we're going to show you the same words for Isa. Yes, for Isa. Right? 19, chapter 19, ayah 33. This is about Isa. Right? This is about Isa, who they cl claim that is Jesus. So peace upon me the day I was born. He and here Isa is talking as a baby he's a baby here yes he's a baby so as a baby from the cradle yes as a baby the islamic isa is talking as a baby he says peace be upon me says isa the baby in the from his cradle the day i was born and the day i die and the day i get resurrected alive so his being his birth is confirmed because he's talking as a baby him dying in the future is confirmed and his resurrection is also confirmed did you catch it guys if you compare this ayah to the ayah of john it's the same it's basically copy paste right the birth is confirmed the death is confirmed and him being raised alive is confirmed as for the baby Isa speaking from his cradle in this ayah. So not only did we show you from this ayah that Jesus, his death and resurrection is confirmed, as you see here, because this is Isa talking in the Quran, but also from chapter 5, ayah 117, ayah 117 from Surah Al-Ma'idah, chapter 5, we showed you that Jesus again confirming 
from two chapters, from two different ayahs, Jesus is confirming his death and resurrection. BAM! Deal with it, Muslims. BAM! Yes. Brother? Brother? Yes, brother. You see? Why are you lying, man? Brother, why are you saying Jesus never died, brother? The word faith, any cause me to die. Die, die. Jesus saying, you cause me to die. Bam. And you dared to lie to us. Guys, how many times? For God's sakes, how many times do I need to tell you? Muslims, we Christian apologists, we always eat our seven ajwa. When I wake up, when I have my coffee, I have seven ajwa, I eat seven ajwa, I become immune for poison, I become immune for black magic, and I get the extra because I'm a Christian, I'm people of the book, I'm part of people of the book, I get the extra, that's immunity for taqiyya. Yes, yes brother, I get the immunity for taqiyya, that's the extra that I get from the seven ajwa. Yes, brother. Yeah, Tippy Bear, you like the Ajwa too, right? You become also immune. Lately, a lot of Christians are becoming immune for Taqiyya because we ate seven Ajwa. Hello, Billy. Hello. Is it me you're looking for? I can see it in your eyes. Billy. Welcome, Billy. Welcome, everybody who just joined in. <laughs> God bless you. <laughs> today's topic guys <clears throat> today's topic is why Muslims don't celebrate Christmas but they actually should because in the Middle East Muslims do celebrate Christmas and the proof is in front of me you see it but here in the West in, especially in the last five years the Muslim Imams here in the West because they know Islam is dying because they know Islam is bankrupt, they are trying their victims, they are trying to tell their Muhammadan victims, don't celebrate Christmas, man. Yeah, we know, we know. In the, West, in, in, in the Middle East, they celebrate. You see? Santa, I want to get Santa, I want a candy. Yes. Here, here, my son, you can have a candy. Ho, ho, ho. Merry Christmas. <clears throat> so why, why here in the West... Why here in the West and why in Asia, Muslim Imam and Ustaz, Shiyukh say, don't, don't do it, man. But in the Middle East, everywhere you go, I kid you not, go to the Middle East. I challenge you to go to the Middle East. Go to Dubai. Go to the Emirat. Go to Iraq. Go to Syria. Even go to Turkey, you'll see they celebrate Christmas more than here in the West. I kid you not. But here in the West, the Muslims are hypocrites. Right? Islam started in the Middle East, right? And they celebrate Christmas more than you here in the West. BAM! Yes. Yes, Abdul, yes, Abdul, yes. So we showed you from different ayahs, guys, from chapter 5, ayah 117, and from chapter 19, 33, where Jesus is confirming his death and resurrection. Right? 5, ayah 117, and ayah 1933. Ayah 1933, Jesus is confirming his death, and in chapter 5, ayah 117, Jesus saying, you cause me to die. Tawafaytani. This is not my translation, Muslims. This is your translation. This is Shakir. Do you see it? Shakir is an Abdul like a Muhammadan like you. Bam! Yes. Brother. Do we have any Muslim? Where are you, ya Ustaz from Asia, from Indonesia? Where are you, ya Imam? Ya yeah, Muhammadans, where are you? Why are you not calling? Do you have any courage to silence me? We are alive, man, for everybody to see. 
We have how many people are watching, guys? 185. We have at least 12, 13 dislikes. Ya Muhammadan, why are you such a coward? Ya Farid, Ya Amin, why are you such cowards? Jaban ibn Jaban. What? My Skype is open. He's a liar, man. Here. He's a liar. He's a troll. Don't believe uh, the Muslims. My Skype is open. You know, taqiyya is in their blood. So, yeah. So, as we showed you guys, this is why the shiuch are teaching the Muhammadans to keep worshipping Muhammad. Right? Do tasbih, do glorification for the Rasul. Chapter 48, I-9. Now, guys, this Abdul that we mentioned earlier, this Abdul here, he has a YouTube channel. A very small YouTube channel, actually. But this guy is one of the minions of uh, Mimi Hijab who made that six hour long video about the apostate prophet. You remember that video that we completely annihilate? That we completely annihilated? That six hour long video? This is one of the guys who made that video. Right? And this guy, guys, this guy, this guy here that you see, loves to expose Christian prince. This guy that you see here, guys, are you with me? Please pay attention. This guy always tries his best and tries out his luck to expose Christian prince in his response videos. This guy is a coward, son of a coward. He's a Jaban ibn Jaban. He does not call Christian prince on his live show. He is a coward. He only makes response videos because he's, he knows when he calls Christian Prince, he's going to get spanked. He knows he will be barbecued like his fake prophet every day. He's a coward. He only makes response videos. So let me show you, guys. Put on your headsets. I want to play a video of this guy who is trying his best to expose Christian Prince in his response video. Put on your headsets and let me play the video for you guys. You see, it says CP doesn't know what Christ means. I'm going to spank this donkey, this potato Farid, right? Let me play the video for you. It says that Jesus Christ, actually the second the Muslim they say Christ, they name Christ, they just named him as God. Do you know what Christ mean? <laughs> Do you know what Jesus mean? <laughs> the founder of Islam is a donkey with certificate. Go and search True right story. now in Google Muhammad what the word Jesus means, Yeshua, yeah. and go and search what the word the Christ means in, in the Greek language, and you will... Guys, before I continue, I challenge any Muslim to show me the meaning of Jesus, Isa. I challenge you to show me the meaning of Isa in your Quran. Is that a good challenge, guys? Since you are attacking Christian prince about the meaning, I challenge you, any sheikh, any imam, any ustaz, you Farid, you donkey, I challenge you, you potato, to show me the meaning of Isa in your Quran. Is that uh, fair, guys? Or the meaning of uh, Jesus al-Masih, yes, Isa al-Masih. Show me the complete meaning of that name from your Quran. Is that, is that fair, guys? Guys, in the text, is it fair? Challenge. I challenge any Muslim, including this donkey potato Farid, who is making response videos, cowardice respond videos about Christian Prince. I challenge you to provide me one ayah and one ayah. I'm not asking for 10. Give me an ayah where it says and explains the meaning of Isa al-Masih. Since you are attacking Christian Prince on the meaning. Well, you have to, because your Quran is bankrupt, because your Allah is bankrupt, because your prophet is a bankrupt, you have to go to our sources, our Christian sources, to understand the meaning. Right, Muslims? Because Allah is the worst communicator and he's a dead God, dead moon idol. Let me continue. We see that you Muslims are so stupid when you say Christ is not God because you just call him Christ, you idiot. You just call him God. Assalamu uh, Bro, I was watching this clip by Christian. Prince, this is Farid, right? And he was commenting on um, the translation of the Quran using the word Christ for the Messiah. Now, from your knowledge, oh, okay, so, so he was saying that Christ means God, 
Yes. Okay. You oh, we're going to expose you now. Wait. Where are your comments? Wait, wait, that? Abdul. Wait, wait, like, wait. What the hell, man? What he needs is a slap on his face. The Arabic. This guy claims to uh, call himself Zekir Hussein. So this guy is another ab potato. He's, uh, he's, he, you, you heard him what he said, right? Let me scroll back or go back a little. Look what this guy is saying about Christian Prince, guys. Guys, focus, okay? We're going to spank both of them. So we're going to spank them with one stone. We're going to spank two Abduls, two Mohammedans. Watch. What he needs is a slap on his face. The Arabic Masih or the Hebrew Moshiach, the Greek version of it is Christos. So that's all Christ means is Christos. Christos means one who is anointed. That's all it means because the kings of Israel and some of the prophets used Guys, you heard him, right? You heard, you heard those two uh, potato coward Abduls who will never ever call us because they are cowards. They know they are getting spanked. They know it. This is why they only make response videos because they are both of them. They are Jaban, son of Jaban. They are both cowards, son of cowards, right? Ya Jaban ibn Jaban, ya Farid, ya Zakir, or Zakir, whatever your potato name is. You are a coward, son of a coward. You are a Jaban ibn Jaban, like your prophet. Because you can only make response videos and you will never ever debate us live, one on one. You coward, coward. Let me spank both Abduls with one stone. Guys, are you with me? Are you with me? Are you with me? Give me one. I don't want to waste my time because I need to be sure that you guys are listening and watching. Okay, good. Take notes, guys. Take your pens out. Take your paper out because you need to make take notes to learn how to defend this claim and spank these muslim abduls take your pens out take notes whenever they bring up this topic because now i'm going to show you that christian prince did not lie here is why guys the messiah means the anointed right the anointed as the abdul explained yes he was right in explanation of the meaning and Jesus means God saves. Yahweh saves, right? Yahweh saves. So the Messiah, Jesus, means the anointed God saves. Abdul, if you are sincere and you want, and you want proof from Christian side, from the Christian side, that these monkeys are doing all kinds of gymnastics, to try their luck out with Christian Prince, only with response videos. So Christian Prince did not lie. The anointed God saves. That's the Messiah Jesus. Where did Christian Prince lie? Where did Christian Prince lie? Huh? Where did Christian Prince lie? Yeah, we have 13 Abdul. I know Farid is watching. This donkey here, I know he's watching. The one who just made that video. Yeah, donkey, son of donkey. Yeah, Jahsh ibn Jahsh, call me. Guys, by the way, donkey is not an insult in the Arabic world. It means ignorant. Okay? So I'm not trying to insult any real donkey, right? I, ch I you know, I ask any real donkey to forgive me if you think you I'm insulting you. But these Abduls are donkeys. They are ignorant. They are illiterate, basically. That's the meaning of donkey in the Arabic world, in the Middle East. This is why you see so many donkeys with big beards in the Middle East. Right? This is why you see so many donkeys in the Middle East. Right? Like this donkey here. This Jash here. So, Christian Prince did not lie. Christian Prince actually was right. And you are wrong, sir. So Christian Prince was right about the meaning of the name of Jesus. The anointed God saves. Right? The anointed God saves. Let me go to the Bible to prove my point and back up our dear brother 
in Christ our brother Christian Prince. Guys, let us go to the Bible. Let us go to the Bible. Because our Bible, there we get our sources from, right? It's our Holy Bible. We are going to spank you with the truth from our Holy Bible. Are you with me, guys? Give me a one if you're with me. Guys, this is Isaiah 61, verse 1. The Spirit of the Lord, God, is upon me. Right? The Spirit of the Lord, God, is upon me. Because the Lord has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. Right? This is a prophecy about the coming of the Messiah. This is about the Messiah, right? He has sent me to bind up the broken hearted. So he is the anointed one to bring the good news. And who is the good news? About himself. He is the good news, right? The gospel means the good news. And who is the good news? It's Jesus, right? So he has sent me to bind up the broken hearted, to proclaim liberty, freedom to the captives and the opening of the prison to those who are bound. So here, you see the conversation, guys? Anointed, the anointed. So it's talking about the Messiah, right? Uh, and then the, the Abdul say, uh, the God needs to be anointed? Yes, because God, who came into the world as the eternal word of God, Jesus, is the eternal word of God, as stated in John 1, 1, in the beginning was God, the Word was with God, and the Word is God, right? And that Word took on flesh, and glory to that Word. He dwelt among us, right? So here, to fulfill the proph prophecy in uh, Isaiah, guys, to fulfill this prophecy in Isaiah 61, 1, we have to go to the New Testament. We have to go to the New Testament, right? If we go to the book of Acts, guys, are you with me? Please focus, take notes. So this is Isaiah 61. Put it down on paper, 61, Isaiah 61, 1. This is Acts 10, verse 38. Write them down. From the King James Bible, it says, how God the Father, this is talking about God the Father, how God the Father anointed Jesus of Nazareth. You see, with the Holy Ghost, with the Holy Spirit. Remember when Jesus went to be baptized by the John Baptist who said, After me, the voice crying in the wilderness, after me, that person will come that I am not even worthy to tie his shoes, his sandals. Remember, so here, when Jesus was baptized, God the Father himself anointed Jesus of Nazareth, his son, with the Holy Ghost, with, and with power, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. God the Father was with him. Did you catch it? There's nothing called Yahya, it's John. Yahya is a lie from Muhammad. And if we go to another verse, guys, if we go to Matthew to e explain it even more, why Jesus needed to fulfill the prophecy in Isaiah, right? Remember, Isaiah 61, that needs to be fulfilled. Isaiah 61, 1. If we go to Matthew chapter 3, verses 16, 17 from the King James Version, it says, so here we are spanking uh, Farid and that Zakir guy, that donkey and potato and it says and Jesus when he was baptized went up straight away out of the water and lo the heavens were opened unto him and he saw the Spirit of God the Holy Spirit the third person of the triune Godhead right the Spirit the Holy Spirit Descended on Jesus like a dove. So the Son, we have the Son, guys, Jesus, the Son. Here the Trinity is confirmed. Muslims say, show us the Trinity. Well, here is the Trinity. And then the Holy Spirit descended on Jesus like a dove and lightning upon him. 
and lo, guys, pay attention, and lo, a voice from heaven saying, this is the Father, Trinity confirmed, take notes. Let me give you the, the link, guys. You know, I'm very passionate, I know, I sound very passionate, I am passionate, because this is a holy month that needs to rebuke falsehood with the truth, and only the truth can set us free. And lo, a voice from heaven, the the voice of the Father, God the Father, saying, This is my beloved Son, who? Jesus. This is my beloved Son, God the Father, with a loud voice, saying, In who I am well pleased. And bam! You got spanked, Abdul. You got served, Mr. Farid. You got spanked, and you got served. And you tried out your luck. And bam! Brother, bam in your face, brother. Bam. See how easy it is to spank these Abduls, guys. So we showed you from Isaiah 61, verse 1. There's a prophecy, and that prophecy must fil be fulfilled because this is talking about the Messiah, right? That is going to be anointed. And we showed you from Acts 10. 38, that the Holy Spirit, God the Father, will anoint God the Son, Jesus, with the Holy Spirit. So here again, the triune God confirmed, the Trinity confirmed. Do you see it? The Father anointing the Son with the Holy Spirit. So, do you see that Christian Prince did not lie? Christian Prince did not lie when he said that the Messiah Jesus means God. Christian Prince was right. You donkey, son of donkey, you failed miserably. Bam! In your faces, Muslims. You see how, in how many verses, guys? Do you see in how many verses the Trinity is confirmed? And Muslims say, show us the Trinity. Well, the Trinity is in front of you, Abdul. The Trinity is in front of you, here. Right? And we showed you why Jesus must be anointed. Because he is fulfilling the prophecy. He is fulfilling the prophecy of Isaiah 61. 1. It must be fulfilled. Because the prophets, the early prophets of Isaiah, like Isaiah, like Moses, who has written about Jesus, didn't say, Jesus himself say, the prophets wrote about me. Didn't Jesus say it from his own mouth? Huh? Yes, he said it. And he must fulfill all the prophecies. One by one. And he did. He did. So you Muslims have no clue what you're talking about, Abduls. You have no clue what you're talking about. And you got spanked and served for everybody to see today. You potato, son of a potato. Like your uh, boyfriend, Zakir, that we just spanked. And Christian Prince, we showed you. We showed you that Christian Prince was right about the meaning. Why Jesus is called the anointed God who saves. The anointed God saves. Guys, are you, are you enjoying today's show and spanking? I told you I'm going to spank today. Didn't I keep my promise, guys? Didn't I keep my promise? We are celebrating the truth. And not only that, we are spanking the, the falsehood and the worshippers of falsehood. Bam! Uh, Sarah, it's cool to be a Muslim. Why? Can you call me and tell me why it's cool to be a Muslim? Sarah, do you have Skype? My Skype is open, Sarah. Look, I challenge you to call me and tell me why Islam is cool. Is that a nice uh, deal? Sarah, Sarah. Call me, call me, Sarah. Sara ya Sara. Mayday, Mayday. Sara, Sara. 
ساره يا ساره ارفع التليفون يلا يا ساره كومي Don't say I don't have a microphone. Come on. Oh, you're 12 years. Oh, okay. Okay. She's a child, guys. She's 12. Okay. Oh, that's bad. Why are you on our show? Because this is not a show for 12 years, kids. You know. I don't I don't understand why uh, parents allow their children to come and uh, watch our shows. Anyway, maybe the truth is for everybody to see. Maybe she's a smart 12-year kid who knows, you know, stop calling Islam uh, cool because Islam calls you all kind of names as a Muslim lady, as a Muslim girl. Right? Muhammad called you all kind of names. He called you half-brained, uh, he called you uh, a dog, he compared you with a dog, Al-Qurtubi compared you with a cow and a camel to be ridden. So, you know, anyway. What's so cool about Islam for a Muslim lady? What's so cool about Islam, man? Sex slaves, women to be sex slaves. What? That's so, Islam is so cool, man. Wow. Guys, if we go to chapter 7. Yeah, I know TM Crossbow, I know. This is why, you know, yeah, let it go. She's a kid. So chapter 7, guys. Surat Al-Araf, chapter 7. I 157. I 157. When we ask Muslims, when we ask Muslims, can you tell us who Muhammad was? They say he was illiterate. What does that mean? We ask them, what does that mean? They say he is the Ummi Prophet. He is the Ummi Prophet. That means, according to them, he, is, he cannot write, he cannot read. Guys, let me show you. Let me show you that Muhammad was actually a copy-paste ma machine. He was a copy-paste machine, stealing information from here, stealing information from there, when he put his Quran together, when he created his own Quran. He actually could write and read very good. We're going, not, we, we don't even need to go to the hadith, guys. Forget about Sahih al-Bukhari where Muhammad is asking for a pen on paper to write something down for the Sahaba so that it will not go astray. Forget about, forget about Sahih al-Bukhari. Forget about it. We're going to show you from the Quran that Muhammad could write and read very well. So this is talking about a Nabi al right? The Ummi Prophet. According to Muslims, if we ask them, what does it mean? This, they say it means illiterate, that you cannot write and read. But wait a second, Abdul. Wait a second. Are you sure? They will say yes. Are you 100% sure? They will say it. Brother? Yes, brother. Brother, are you sure, brother? Yes, brother. Okay, Zakir Naik, are you sure? Yes, brother. Okay. You heard Zakir Naik, you heard the Muslims, right? Uh, Rory, Rory and others, uh, if you have any questions, guys, uh, if you have any questions, uh, if you know my style of teaching, guys, if you know my style of teaching, I always say that if you have any questions in the chat, please keep your questions, hold your horses to the live Q&A session. After we are done teaching, I'm not done teaching, you see it? So if you have questions, keep the questions for yourself and ask them when the live Q&A starts. All right, guys? So allow me to finish and we will allow you to ask questions in the end. All right? Please, guys, don't interrupt me when I'm teaching. Only if you're a Muslim, you can call me today. Only if you're a Muslim, you can call me on my Skype. All right? So if you have questions in the chat, keep them for yourself. We will allow you to ask them in the live chat. So write them down so you will not forget them and we will answer your questions in the live chat in the live Q&A session after the, done, after the teaching is done. Okay, guys? This is my style of teaching. Everybody should know that by now. So guys, we're going to explain to you that the word Ummi does not mean illiterate as in not reading and writing, not knowing how to read or write. The word Ummi 
it, the true meaning in the Quran is spiritually dead. A spiritually dead person. Someone who did not receive. In this case, it's Muhammad, right? Someone who did not receive the scripture of God. Why? Because if you continue reading, it says the people of the book, right? It's talking about the people of the book. Right? Because the people of the book, they receive the Torah and the gospel. The Jews and the Christians, they are called the people of the book. Guys, the people of the book are not called Ummiyun because they are not spiritually dead. They already got the scripture from God. But Muhammad is called Ummi, singular, Ummi, Ummiyun, plural, Ummi, singular. Muhammad is called Ummi because he is spiritually dead. He did not receive the book from God like the Jews and the Christians, the people of the Torah and the Gospel. And we are going to prove it from a different ayah. Watch. Watch guys, focus. If we go to chapter, chapter of Al-Baqarah, the chapter of the cow. Yeah, chapter of the cow. Uh, chapter 2, ayah 78. Chapter of the cow. It says, then there are among them some unlettered people who is this talking about about the jews the bani israel right this is talking about the bani israel the jews the sons of israel the jews right i forgot the s but anyway you get the idea so this is talking about the jews but not all the jews there are among them some couple a group of the jews do you see it? Among of the among people of among the Jews, do you see it? Women whom so among them there are some unlettered prof, people, some unlettered or illiterate people. Umiyun, plural. Did you catch it? So here this is talking about the Ummi, singular. Here is talking about Ummiyun, plural. Why are they Ummiyun? Why are they illiterate? Why are they illiterate? Because those group of people among the Jews, women whom, group of people of Jews, not all the Jews, guys, not all the Jews, only a small group, they have, it says, they are spiritually dead. They do have the scripture, but they are spiritually dead. They have no knowledge, do you see it? Of what? Of the book, of the Torah. Bam! Bam! They think they know the scripture, right? They think they know the scripture, but they are spiritually dead. They only are guessing. They are guided by mere conjecture and guesswork. Do you see it? So guys, Muhammad was actually not illiterate as as in illiterate that he cannot write and read he was actually spiritually dead unlike the jews and the christians who were not ummiyun only a part of them fake jews yes fake jews are ummiyun called ummiyun and this is only a part of the jews a small group do you see it now when we ask guys when we ask muslims can you show us one ayah from the Quran where it says that the Torah, maybe the gospel is corrupted? They immediately, without any reading the context, because the context starts here, right? This is talking about the Jews. Small group of the Jews. So those small group, guys, this small group of the Jews, the fake Jews who are spiritually dead like Muhammad, right? Like Muhammad, the spiritually dead prophet of Islam, when you continue, Muslims will give you this ayah when you ask for an ayah from the Quran where it says that the Torah or the Bible or the Injil is corrupted. So they, they forget about this ayah, the first one, the one above, and they immediately go to 79. So it says it continues about the among, the group among the Jews that are spiritually dead, right? Ummiyun, those same Ummiyun, so who to their learned people who write the law with their own hands and they say to the people this is from Allah so that they might gain some paltry world end 
They are not see that this is writing of their hands will bring who to them and what they gain thereby will lead to their own. Right? So this is talking about the same people who are spiritually died like Muhammad. Those small group of Jews who are spiritually dead like Muhammad. And they think they know the Torah and the law and they write it with their own hands and they say this is from Allah. This is from God. Did you see? Did you catch what, what I just did, guys? Did, give me a one if you caught what I did. I just explained to you that the Bible is not corrupted. Muslims cannot show us one ayah. This is not talking about the corruption of the Bible. This is not talking about the corruption of the Torah or let alone the Gospel. This is talking about a spiritually dead group of Jews from among the Jews. Only a small group who think they know the scripture and they write it down. And they think this is the true scripture. So these are fake Jews, dead spiritual Jews. This is why they are called Ummiyun, like the spiritually dead Muhammad, prophet of Islam. Ummi, plural, singular, plural, singular. You see how easy it is to spank the, their lies when you ask them for one ayah where it says that the, the Bible is corrupted. They immediately go, this is a very fa famous ayah. That they go to. Chapter 2, Ayah 79. I hope you took notes, guys. They have no clue about the Quran. They cannot read it in context to understand what this is talking about. Chapter 2, Ayah 78, 79. Wrote, write them down. Chapter 77, Ayah 157. 7, 157. Back to back to 2, 78, 79. You see how easy it is to spank Islam and the Quran of Allah. And to show that Muhammad could write and read very well. He was not actually illiterate. He was only spiritually dead. Unlike the people of the book, the Jews and the Christians who got the scripture from God. This is why they are not called Ummiyun. This is why they are called people of the book. Bam, brother! Do you like our teaching, guys? Did you enjoy... The explanation and the spanking of the Muslim claims. Show us one ayah. Muslims, we have always asked for the last 1400 years. Show us one ayah from the Quran where it says that the Bible is corrupted. We are challenging you. Show me one ayah. Just one. I'm not asking for ten. One. Just one. You don't have it, do you? <laughs> Lord have mercy. And as we showed you. How easy it is to spank Farid, to spank Amin, to spank Zakir, who try to create response videos, but they have no courage to call us live. Cowards, you Jaban, son of a Jaban. You're a coward, son of a coward. You'll never ever call us because you're going to get spanked left and right. That's why you don't dare to call us, right? You boy! You boy, you're finished. Speaking from Kif, Hira, you're finished, finished, finished. You're finished, Farid. You're finished. Don't ever, ever try out your luck with Christian Prince, man. Because you're going to get spanked like today. If we go to chapter 4, guys. If you go to chapter 4, Surat An Nisa. Ayah 171. O people of the scripture. Ya ahl al kitabi. O people of the scripture, do not exaggerate in your religion. And do not say about Allah except the truth. The Messiah. Guys, we have always asked ourselves, we Arabic speaking Christians. Are you with me, guys? Are you still there? We have always asked ourselves why the Messiah is written like this in the Arabic. Does have, are you, do you know what I'm talking about, guys? Have you any idea what I'm talking about? Why is Al Masih written like this? Do you have any idea why Al Masih is written like this? Anyone in the text? Tipi Bear says Al. 
Okay, what do you mean, Tippy Bear? You're very, 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 very warm. You're very, very close. Why did you mention L? Tippy Bear says, our dear sister, our dear admin says, it's a unique title. Why is it a unique title, Tippy Bear? I know I'm, I'm busting some balls here. I know. Sorry. Sorry to make it hard on you, sister. But why is it a unique title? TM cross pulls. Bam! You caught it. The elif. But the elif what? Continue, man. What do you mean by the elif? You're very close. Michel, uh, Michel van der Vlees. Oh, Michael van der Vlees. I, I, sorry if I'm butchering your name. L, not L. No, no, no. Guys, come on, you're close. Come on, come on. Uh, Tippy Bear, she, she, she was actually very, very close. But why is it unique? Why is it unique title? Tippy Bear saying, you don't say the Tippy Bear unless it's someone important. And BAM! That's a good claim. Thank you, Tippy Bear. Yes, Tippy Bear is right. Guys, if you study the Quran, if you study the Quran, you will only find Allah with L as a person. We are talking about persons, and especially one and one person alone, right? Allah, L, L, La is only reserved for Allah, the L. But why are you using the same L for El Messi? Uh oh, Muslims, you're in trouble again. You're in trouble again. Because El Messiah is equal with Allah. And bam! What did you say, Rob Christian? El Messiah, the Messiah, is equal to Dila. The La is actually Al Masih. And we already explained that from chapter 9, ayah 31. Remember? Al Masih, or sorry, Allah, Wal Masih. Right? They are equal. Is Muhammad's name written like this? Question to the Muslims. This is a question to the Muslims. Is Muhammad in the Quran mentioned like this? No. The answer is no. Big no. Big no. So why is this title only for Jesus, Muslims? Uh oh. Uh oh, because Al Masih and Allah are equal. They are lords, right? They are lords. Allah and Al Masih are lords in Islam. Bam! Yes, yeah, same L. Did you catch it? Nobody else in the Quran as one person is written with an L except the, the Messiah, right? So this is the Messiah because even in the Quran, the Messiah is worthy to be called God. But Muhammad is not written like the Muhammad because he's not worthy. He is a fake prophet. Muhammad, he, when he took this word, the Messiah, the Messiah, or El Messiah, when he stole it from our Holy Bible, he busted himself. He spanked himself. But Muslims don't think about these details. They don't think about these details. Right, Muslims? Do you see it? El Masih. Allah. El La. El Masih. Do you see it? So we continue reading from the same chapter, same ayah, 171. It says, the Messiah, who is God actually in the Quran, the Messiah, Isa, there's nothing called Jesus, the son of Mary, he is the messenger. Okay, we agree. Jesus is the messenger as the eternal word of God who came with the good news, talking about himself that he is the good news. Fulfilling all the laws. Fulfilling all the prophecies. So, okay. He's the messenger. Great. He's the messenger. Great. He is the eternal word of God. Right? He is the eternal word of Allah. He's the eternal word of Allah. The word of Allah. Uh-oh. 
Uh oh. And he is the spirit of Allah. Bam! Muslims. And we showed you that he shares the same title of Allah. Do you see it? Uh oh. What are you going to do with this, Muslims? What are you going to do with this, Muslims? This is truly a huge, huge disaster that Muhammad created in the Quran. Over and over and over and over. Guys, if we go to chapter 57. I know this is a lot of stuff, a lot of information today, I know. If you go to chapter 57, ayah 1, it says, Glorifying Allah is everything in the heavens and the earth. He is the Almighty, He is the wise. To Him belongs the kingdom of the heavens and the earth. He gives life and causes death and He has power over all things. He is the first and last. Do you see it? So you see how many claims? are here about Allah. Guys, He is actually everything. He is the Almighty. He is the one who belongs the kingdom of the heavens and the earth. He is the one who gives life. And He is the one who causes death. He has all power over all things and He is the first and last. Let us see guys. Let us see. Guys, are you with me? This is important. Let us see if the Bible makes the same claims about Jesus. Let us go. This is Revelation 22, the book of Revelation 22, verse 13. It says, Jesus is saying, Jesus is the one talking, I am the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and last. What did Allah say in the Quran? He is the first and last. This is the claim from Allah, right? When we ask Muslims who is talking here, they say it's Allah. Okay, so Allah is the first and last. But wait a second, Jesus is making the same claim. He calls himself the first and last. You see it? He's the Alpha and Omega. The first and last. So here we can agree that Allah is claiming divinity and so is Jesus claiming divinity. If we go to another verse, guys. Colossians chapter 1 verses 14 to 16. In whom we have, this is talking about Jesus, in whom we have redemption through his blood. Even the forgiveness of sins. So because of the blood of Jesus, we are forgiven. Our sins are forgiven. Who is the image of the invisible God. Jesus is the image of the invisible God. The firstborn of every creature. For by him, by who? For by him all things were created. That are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible whether they be thrones, or dominions, or principalities, or powers, all things were created by Him, and for Him, for who? Jesus, glory to His name. What did the Quran say? He has knowledge all over things, right? He, it is He who created the heavens and the earth. He has the power of all things. He has, He, he to Him belongs the heavens and the earth. What did the Bible say about Jesus, everything is for Jesus and created by him for him. Everything on the earth, all the thrones, all the dominions, all the powers, everything, all things were created by Jesus and for Jesus. And BAM! Do you see guys? How? Why? Why guys? Do you see why? Jesus, al Messiah, is equal to Allah. Do you see it? Even according to the Quran, Jesus is equal to Allah. Right? And we are showing you how Jesus is God. Because all things were created by Him and for Him. For who? And by who? For Jesus. He owns everybody. Everybody who is sitting and watching, you are owned by Jesus Christ. Because He is God. He is the image of the invisible God on, on earth. Did you catch it? Not only that, if you go to John 1, 
verse 1 to 3, it says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same Word that existed with God in the very beginning. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him. By who? By the Word. And without Him was not anything made that was made. So this is why we must worship our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Because He is our God. And everything was made by Lord Jesus. So Muslims, you should, and that's the topic of today, you should celebrate Christmas with us because even according to the Quran, as we showed you today, Jesus is Lord. So you should celebrate Christmas with us here in the West. Don't listen to your fake deceptive Imams because for them, Islam is business. Like Mimi Hijab, right? Islam is business. And we showed you that even in the Middle East, they celebrate Christmas. The Muslims celebrate Christmas. So please, Muslims, come back home. Drop Muhammad, who is dead and rotting in Medina. He is not equal to Jesus in any shape or form. Please come back home to Jesus and celebrate Christmas with us. This holy month. Celebrate the coming of our holy Lord into the world. As the eternal word that came into the flesh. Celebrate this holy month with us. Come back home. Rana Hannes, Rob, you're wrong. How am I wrong? How am I wrong? How am I wrong? <laughs> How am I wrong? Come on, lady. Can you, can you show me where I was wrong today? I challenge anyone to show me where I'm wrong today. I challenge you to call me live. We are live. Come on, man. We are live. Call me. Ya Ustaz, Ya Imam. Ya Akhwan, call me. My Skype ID is the Rob Christian. Man up, Farid. You got spanked today again. You got spanked on the topic of the anointed God. And we prove to you that you are a liar. You cannot in any shape or form rebuke Christian Prince. How am I wrong, Rana? You said, Rob Christian, you are wrong. Uh, Rana Hanna is saying they see Santa is giving them free stuff, so they take it, so they are not celebrating. Well, uh, uh, Rana, Rana, I'm from the Middle East, Rana. I am from the Middle East. I've seen Muslims with my own eyes celebrating Christmas. More than the Muslims here in the, in the West. What are you talking about? Go to, let's say, go to Aleppo. Aleppo in Syria today. Go visit Aleppo. That's the second largest city. You will see Muslims celebrating Christmas more than Christians. I kid you not. I've seen it with my own eyes. So what are you talking about? <laughs> they even decorate their, their houses. I've seen Muslim houses, guys. I kid you not. I've seen Muslim houses. They are decorating for Christmas. They are decorating their house with all kind of lights, Christmas lights, all kind of decoration for Christmas. I've seen it in my own eyes in the Middle East. What are you talking about? They even go party. Even the Christmas party that Christians go to, right? They join the Christians there in their Christmas parties and celebration of New Year. Yes, in the Middle East. So actually, the Muslims in the Middle East are much moderate Muslims than the Muslims here in the West. I kid you not. Because the shiuch, the shiuch here in the West are trying to save Islam. Because Islam is dying in the West. Islam is dying. They are bankrupt. They are trying their best with all kind of gymnastic to teach the Muslims in the West or maybe in Asia. Not the Middle East, but in Asia. Please don't celebrate Christmas with Christians, man. Don't go to their houses. 
and eat and celebrate with them. Just say no. <laughs> Do we have any Muslim? Do we have any questions in the chat, guys? Now it's now the live Q&A started. If you have any questions, guys, please ask. Because I cannot teach and answer questions in the chat at the same time. Okay, Rory is saying, Rob Christian does condemn in Jeremiah 10. I would like to know. What do you mean? What, what does Jeremiah condemn? Jeremiah 10 condemn. What do you mean? TP Bear sent me a video. You send me a video. Do you want me to play that video, TP Bear? What do, what do you mean? Do, should I play that video? Is that what you're saying? TP Bear, should I play that video? Okay, we can play the video if you like. No, no worries. Let's see. Let's see what kind of video this is. We it's in the house. I hope everyone is doing well. Now in this video, oh, this is what video video this is an ex-Muslim guys. Sheikh Think he's from Yasir Qadi, Pakistan uh, or India? I don't know. Giant of Al Islam in the Dawa movement. Talking about and, um, Yasir Qadi. Okay. This this uh, this uh, Sheikh, A.K.A. Uh, Ya'juj Ma'juj, is the original idea. <laughs> oh yeah. By the way, guys, this this the guy that you saw here, Yasir Qadi claims that Ya'juj and Ma'juj are zombies yes zombies exist in islam zombies yes brother zombies according to yasir qadi there are zombie like creatures in the form and shape of yajuj and majuj who are sent away behind a big wall so they are zombies muslim scholar believe in zombies the walking dead aka the walking mr. Dead. zombie yeah. aka mr supra rational um what he said in this video uh, genuinely, I was gobsmacked. I, I really was gobsmacked. I was like, did he actually just say that? So what I'm going to be doing is reacting to what he's saying. And this video was brought to my attention by none other than the godfather of the ex-Muslim movement and my real father-in-law, uh, Hassan Radwan. So please check out his video in the, in the description below. Give it a thumbs up and subscribe to his channel. Um, without... Without any further ado, let's get into it. If solid arguments and good person, uh, guys, I forgot to put on my mic. Sorry, I wanted to address Rory. Rory, the same book of Jeremiah is actually talking about the new covenant. The new covenant in Jeremiah is mentioned. There will be a new covenant this time with all mankind. And Jesus, the one who came to fulfill the old covenant, fulfilled the old. 613 laws of the Jews and only who were created for the Jews. Jesus came to fulfill the laws. He came to fulfill the old covenant and brought the new covenant. That's the same Jeremiah, my friend. Let me continue this video. Personality were enough to convince the world of the truth of Islam. The Quraysh would have been convinced of the Prophet ﷺ as soon as the Prophet ﷺ opened his mouth. And remember that even our Prophet ﷺ, it took him 23 years of constant preaching. And even then, it wasn't his arguments that won the Quraysh over at the end of the day. It was the political conquest of Mecca. Wow! Did you catch what he said, guys? People actually didn't care about what Muhammad had to, had to say. The actual thing that could make Islam strong is was conquering of lands. In this case, Mecca and continue on and continue on. All the countries that were conquered, it was nothing, uh, you know, you could, Muhammad could preach all day long. No one is, was listening to him. Muhammad, guys, according, as, as you heard from Yasir Qadi, I can go back a little because here he's busting his prophet. 
Let me go a big, a little back. Guys, pay attention what he's saying, okay? Convince the world of the truth of Islam. The Quraysh would have been convinced of the Prophet as soon as the Prophet opened his mouth. And remember that even our Prophet وسلم, it took him 23 years of constant preaching. And even then, it wasn't his arguments that won the Quraysh over it. Did you catch it? Muhammad was preaching for 23 years and her argument was not succeeding. <laughs> so what did he do? He needed to go use violence and only by violence Islam was spread, not by the truth, not by preaching, not through uh, preaching, because the pagans rejected him, the Jews rejected him, and the Christians rejected him. Did you catch it? <laughs> Is that what you, what you were trying to show us, Tippi Bear, sister? Tippi Bear, is that what you wanted to show us? Thank you for this video, actually. I, I, I think I've seen this video before. So guys, according to this Sheikh Yasser Al-Qadi, Dr. Yasser Al-Qadi, according to him, Muhammad was preaching for 23 years, nobody was listening. He was preaching to a brick wall. And only by the sword, and only by the sword, Muhammad spread Islam. Not by the truth, not through preaching. Damn Muslims, deal with it. This is not me speaking, this is Yasser Qadi. Right? Let me go a little bit back because I'm enjoying this. Prophet وسلم, it took him 23 years of constant preaching. And even then, it wasn't his arguments that won the Quraysh over at the end of but the day. But the sword. It was the political conquest of Mecca. Thank you. The sword. By force. Do you see it? Muslims. Muhammad could preach all day long. No one accepted him. Only through the sword of Muhammad, Islam was spread. Is this, is this enough, Tipi Bear, or should I continue? Because I don't want to play the entire video. Is, was this your idea to share with our, with our friends here? Tipi Bear. This is good? Okay. Then you got it. Do we have any Muslim guys? Do we have any Muslim? If not, I think we'll wrap this up. If there are no Muslims who has the courage and the knowledge to call me, I think we'll wrap this up in now and five minutes. In now and five minutes, we'll wrap this up. Do we have any Muslim? They are admitting defeat. Yeah, I know two people. They know Islam cannot be spread by the truth. They, Islam, even the scholars are admitting that Islam was only spread by the sword, not by truth. What truth? Everyone rejected him. So Muhammad went to Medina. He tried out his luck with the Jews. The Jews re rejected him. And he got himself an army. And he became stronger and stronger, powerful and more powerful. And he started to, you know... With violence, spreading Islam. And only through violence. Only through the sword. Do you have any Muslim? Almost two hours and no phone call, but 14 dislikes. What a shame, Muslims. You Muslims are bankrupt. You are coward. You Farid are a coward. You can only make response videos. And... Still you get spanked together with your boyfriend Zakir, right? You got spanked trying to attack Christian Prince. And Christian Prince, we showed you guys, he was right. He, Christian Prince, was right about the name of Christ. And we showed you from many biblical sources why Jesus needed to be anointed, right? Why Jesus needed to be anointed? Because he had to fulfill a prophecy, right? You're finished. So Christian Prince did not lie. Christian Prince was right. And you are wrong, Abdul. Ya Muhammadan, son of Muhammadan. Do you have any Muslim who has the courage and the knowledge to try out his luck with me live? We are live, brother. Brother, we are live, brother. Yalla ya khwan. 
No Muslims. I think, guys, really Islam is dead. We don't have Muslims who can call us and refute us. Islam is bankrupt. Please come back home, Muslims. Come and celebrate Christmas with us like they do in the Middle East. Come back home to our Lord and Savior. Glory to His name. Come celebrate this holy month with us. Come back home to Jesus. Drop Muhammad, the dead and rotting fake prophet who is rotting somewhere in Medina. Come back home to our Lord and Savior. Guys, thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. Help me to help you. Subscribe. Smash that like button. And click on the notification bell to receive notifications when we go live. Thank you for watching, guys. God bless you and God bless your families. I thank our Lord and Savior for everything. We need you, Jesus. Everyone here needs Jesus, including myself. I'm replaceable. I'm a nobody without you, Jesus. I need you. Thank you for your good news. Thank you for your gospel. Thank you for being the good news. Thank you for saving us through your blood. Thank you saving us. And through your grace and ultimate sacrifice, we are saved. Jesus is Lord, glory to his name. And Muhammad is a fake prophet. Islam is bankrupt. Muslims, it's not late. We know Rome was not built in one day, Muslims. So you have some time. But please, if you are sincere with yourself, please drop Muhammad who created Islam for his own sexual desires and come back home to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Thank you for watching, guys. Thank you for your support. God bless you and God bless your families in this very holy month. Lord willing, we will see each other again in an amazing live show like today. God bless.